I've always been really interested in the process of taking something that already exists in its full form and then translating it to this medium. And you've all had such interesting trajectories getting to adaptation um, and different uh, parts of the industry and other industries. So uh, I'm very excited to have this conversation. I'd love to actually just start the conversation if you could all sort of just speak to why you became a writer in the first place? What interested you about writing? Um, maybe Linwood, do you want to give us a? Well, I mean, I was I started writing stories probably around grade three or four, and 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 it kind of ties in with what we're talking about tonight because I, you know, people expect you to say that you were inspired by Tolstoy or Dickens or something like that, and for me, it was television was what made me want to write because I had favorite TV shows as a kid. And an episode a week wasn't enough for me, so I would take those characters and create my own stories with them. So by what we would call fan fiction today. So mm. around about the time I was in grade six, seven, or eight, I was, you know, I was, I was writing 30, 40, 50 page novellas typed based on, on my favorite TV shows. And so it was, mm. it was really television that got me excited about wanting to write mm. um, when I was a kid. And, and you know, as I got older, I thought, gee, maybe I could invent characters of my own instead of using somebody else's. And and so I always wanted to write. Um, and uh, I mean, I ended up having really a career in newspapers where you get paid money to write every day. And it's only been in the last 15 or so years that I've been able to kind of go back to what I wanted to do as a kid, which is to, just to tell stories, to write fiction. I relate to that. I used to write fan fiction about the soap operas I watched yeah. as a young teenage girl. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's a, so relatable, right? Yep. We're so inspired by those those stories we see all the time in our homes, right? That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Susan? I used to write a lot when I was younger, too. And then somewhere in probably middle school, I got the idea that I wasn't good at it or I mm -hmm. wasn't going to show it to anyone or something. One of those things happened where... Uh, it became a secret, hmm. and and I became an actor instead, and I was an actor for a long time. But um, I got kind of frustrated with the acting business at a certain point, so I started writing out of deep frustration and found that I really enjoyed it. It was something that you know you don't have to wait to for someone to give you a job. Yeah. So it became something that was as as important to me, or as as enriching as being an actor at that point. Wonderful. That's great. And Arturo. Well, I'm not really a writer, I'm a documentary filmmaker, right. and um, I do write my documentary films, mm -hmm. which is very different than writing fiction. It's more, the way I see it, it's more about writing structure. So the last film I made, which is not a documentary, I adapted the, the screenplay into the, to the film. Um, the adaptation was not really writing the way I see it, it was more restructuring the play into a film. Hmm. It was a bit of an editing job and uh, writing the structure, I would say. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So the work you were doing in documentary just sort of folded into this narrative structure yes, now. Yes, yes. And we did, um, I take a different approach because I'm very, um, I don't feel very secure when writing, especially English is not my first language. So I feel like I cannot really write English dialogue. It's going to sound fake. It's going to sound like everybody's ESL. <laughs> so I get conscious, right? So okay. what I do, what I did for the drawer boy, I went and looked at uh, documentaries to, that were shot in that era, the time and the place, especially one, the Clinton special that Michael Ondaatje shot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and basically just lifted dialogue from the people that were there wow. being interviewed or talking and then when we recreated some scenes it was just lifted dialogue from the scenes that people actually said in real life in the late 60s early 70s right so then we again structured the scene and then just used the dialogue for the characters that we had invented from one dialogue from here and one dialogue from there so it was a bit of a making a little Frankenstein put together. Right. That's so cool because it's sort of then an adaptation of the play by Michael Healy, the mm -hmm. drawer boy, but then also the documentaries and there were documentaries about the farm show, which was a, which another is that play. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Clinton yeah, the, special. The yeah. Clinton special. So that's fascinating because in a way it's an adaptation of multiple yeah. works. Wow, that's so cool. It yeah. was very fun. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it. <laughs> 